predator. Later on, shown on balance sheet here, it looks like this. Okay, bonds payable is still at the face value. So regardless of whichever case, bonds payable, the original face value is still there. But there, are, there will be a discount listed beneath it or um, a premium listed underneath it. Okay, so the carrying amount here, like the face, basically looks like the book value of the bond is $104,100. This is the carrying amount. And then we have to amortize this $4,100 of premium later. Okay, now don't forget that interest for bonds is paid every half a year. Now the formula to pay interest, the cash interest part is exactly the same for all three cases. We're always calculating cash interest part based on $100,000 face value times interest rate times half a year. Okay, so this part cash interest payment $4,500 is the same for issuing at par, same for issuing at discount, issuing at a premium. Okay, but later on when we journalize the interest entry, if it's at par, basically interest expense would equal cash interest that we're paying. If it's at discount, interest expense would equal cash plus a portion of discount on bonds payable. If it's at premium, then later on this $4,500 would not be the same as interest expense either, but interest expense will be lower than cash interest. Because earlier when we issued the bond, we collected more upfront. So relatively speaking, with into interest expense account, later on we recognize it as lower than $4,500. Okay, well, I'm just showing the interest in interest entry in the, in the following slide. Okay, so when we journalized interest here, Again, cash interest, we're always paying $4,500. This is always calculated based on the principal amount of the bond, interest rate, half a year. The difference is that here, this is not equal to interest expense because we amortize premium in the middle. Okay, keep in mind, premium is additional money that company is able to borrow from creditor at the time point when they issue the bond. So even though later on they're paying interest $4,500, since in the beginning you collected more money, you can think of it as really recording interest expense. We're really giving away interest not as much as $4,500 because we collected $4,100 in advance at the time of issuance. Okay, so when we journalize interest entry, premium on bonds payable, we amortize again based on the lifetime, five years. And then since we're journalizing this every half a year, we will be reducing the premium account 410 every half a year. Okay, so the premium on bonds payable account earlier, there was $4,100 of credit balance. After this journal entry, we deduct $410,000. This is half a year. And then another half a year, you deduct another $410,000. $410, another half a year, you deduct another $410. So after 10 entries later, this premium on bonds payable will become zero, and that's the time point when bonds payable matures. The $100,000 will need to be paid back to creditor. Okay, so 10 years 
Uh, five years later, after 10 journal entries of interest, what would be the last entry to do when we want to pay back this money to creditor? When company is paying, is paying this money to creditor, what do we journalize at the end? Just flip the first, is it just flip the first one? So that would be, so what about the premium here? First entry, there's a premium. So premium will gradually be reduced little by little every half a year, right? So when it reaches the end of the bond's lifetime, we're basically just paying the face value, the par value of the bond. Right, so for all three cases, when it reaches the end of the year, discount and premium disappears when we're paying back the money to bondholders. Okay, very last entry would always look like this, regardless of whether you issue the bond at the par value, at the discount, at premiums. At the end, it always looks like this. Okay, because in the middle of the year, we already took care of all the interest and also we amortized all the premium and discount little by little every half a year. So the third entry for all three cases is the same. You're paying back just the face value because you already deducted and amortized all the discounts and premium in the middle. Now, for bonds, all three cases, the critical entry really is the interest entry. For if um, companies issue the bond at the par value and maturity value, meaning the stated interest rate is the same as market interest rate, then every half a year when they journalize interest, interest expense will be the same as the cash interest that they're paying, $4,500. Okay, because in the beginning, there wasn't any discounts and premiums. They had $100,000 of bond certificate in mind. They want to borrow this amount of money, and they actually did borrow that amount of money. So when we calculate interest, it would just simply be $100,000 times 9% times every half a year. $4,500 would be the cash interest that the company is paying, also the interest expense recorded. But for discounts, remember, discounts on bonds payable. This is a contra liability account. Oftentimes when we just issue the bond, there's a dollar amount here, and then we gradually reduce little by little every half a year in interest entry. So in that case, any discount on bonds payable when we journalize interest, we're paying cash interest still $4,500, but there will be a discount on bonds payable that's additional interest expense considered. Because in the beginning when we issue bond, we collected less money from bondholders, and we think of it as additional interest that we gave to bondholders. And that part we gradually consider it into interest expense. So then interest expense, there are two parts, discounts and cash interest. For bonds payable at a premium, it's the opposite compared to um, discounts cases. So premium, we basically borrow more money at the time point when we issue bonds because our interest rate is more attractive compared to other companies' bonds. Okay, so when we borrow more money up front, later on when we consider interest, even though we're paying $4,500, we think of that additional money as reducing interest expense actually recognized. Okay, so we don't have $4,500 here, but we have a lower amount here as interest expense because this part here, premium, we collected more money than we thought we could. So think of this as reducing interest expense. That's what's happening here. So every half a year, we'll journalize the same entry that looks like this for 10 times. And then at the end, when the bond matures, it will be this entry, pay back the original face value. Any questions? 